Okay. You just have to make it real life. <laughs> So we're going to wait for people to join. Think so? I don't know. Okay, that's <clears throat> it. <laughs> I actually can't stop. Wait, don't know, because they can hear us now. <laughs> Hi guys, so we're just going to wait for everyone else to join and then we'll start. Then we'll start. Seven people now here? Yeah. So we'll just wait a little bit longer. A little bit of a bigger turnout. Oh, we have even less people now. Wait, it says no data though. What is that supposed to mean? Okay, so we'll start in like two minutes. <clears throat> yeah. Let's wait two minutes then. Wait, can any of you guys see us? Can you comment something so we know that? Yeah, can you any guys? No, 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 don't type on anything. So we know that. Make sure you stop. Like, wait, let's just wait for this call. Anyone to comment? So all through this lecture, you, if you guys have any questions, you can just write in the comments, and we'll try and answer them. Yeah. There's even less people now. There's four people. Okay, should we? Should we just stop? Okay, I, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay should perfect. we just start that? Okay. So today we're going to be talking about the lower extremities muscles. So I'm Cornelia. Um, and I'm Sandra, and we are both fifth year medical students. Um, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's start. <laughs> Okay, so for introduction, um, so basically during dissection and for the exam, like when you press in a muscle, you have to follow this order. So like origin, like where it originates from. And so where the muscle, then the next part is where the muscle, the insertion of the muscle, so where it inserts into. Um, then, and innovation, so like the nerve supply. And then the function, so what the muscle does and the effect on the body. Yeah. So our main advice for you guys is to memorize the white book. This is the Bible for anatomy, basically. basically. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah. Yeah, when we had dissection week, we basically made flashcards of... Yeah, like each muscles and their origin, insertion, innovation, function. And we basically like tested each other. Um, so yeah, like dissection is all about like memorizing the yeah. muscles. And and another thing I would say is like, if you find something online about the muscles, they might have slightly different origin and mm. insertion than from the white book. So always follow the white yeah. book. Because that, that's exactly what the examiners want. Exactly. So, don't try and remix it. 
just learn <laughs> learn what the white book has to say and like we're saying so after every section if any of you guys want to ask a question just comment down below and yeah we will try to answer okay so we'll go on to the next part now so the um, so yeah we will start with the gluteal region so basically hip muscles and um, these are located posteriorly to the pelvic bone and at the proximal end of the femur so basically these muscles are divided into two groups anterior and posterior and posterior is then further divided into two groups so superficial group and deep group yeah and as you can see so with the anterior group there is the iliopsoas muscle and with the posterior group so we split it into further like we said so superficial and deep and in the superficial group you have the gluteus maximus gluteus medius gluteus mi minimus tensor fascia lata um, then in the deep group we've made a little mnemonic for you guys um, for you guys to remember when it comes to your exams and things like that and we've done it in like the order that it goes from like the most su um, superior yeah. to the inferior so we've kind of put it in order of the muscles so you have so the deep muscles is piriformis <laughs> Gemellus superior, gemellus inferior, um, obturator internus, um, quadratus femoris. So the, mo the mnemonic is please go GQ. So please is piriformis, G is gem gemellus superior, O is obturator internus, and then, then you go to gemellus inferior, and then you have quadratus femoris. So first we're going to talk about the anterior group of the gluteal region. Um, so the anterior group basically consists of one muscle, which is the iliopsoas muscle. And this muscle consists of two muscles. So it consists of the psoas major and the iliacus. Um, so if we're looking at the picture now, you can see the psoas and then the iliacus muscle and both of these two muscles make up the iliopsoas so now we've split it into uh psoas major so the origin is <coughs> the intervertebral disc as you can see it starts from like the intervertebral disc and the fibrous ligament along the lumbar backbone and mm -hmm. um, and then, so this muscle, the psoas major, joins with the iliacus muscle at the terminal line of the pelvis. So when this muscle joins the other muscle and they come together, um, so that's why we then said the iliacus originates at the terminal line of the pelvis in the iliac fossa. And then together, both of these muscles descend through the lacuna muscularum and insert into the lesser trochanter of the femur um, and they are innervated by the lumbar plexus and their function is the hip joint flexion okay so over to the super superficial group of the um posterior region of glute so posterior part of the gluteal region um so first so the most superficial layer is gluteus maximus so this one um and this one originates in the posterior gluteal line so basically here and dorsal side of the sacral bone and thoracolumbar fascia um and it inserts into iliotibial tract gluteal tuberosity of femur, femoral aspiral line, lateral lip, uh, and innervated by gluteus inferior. Uh, and then over to the middle layer, uh, so basically uh, gluteus medius, uh, medius and minimus. Uh, so the origin is between posterior and anterior gluteal line. So yeah, basically here. Um, 
and uh, the external lip of the iliac crest uh, and gluteus minimus is originates between anterior and inferior line so here and both of them have uh, attached to greater trochanter of femur and innervated by gluteus superior um, so onto the lateral layer we have tensor tensor fascia latte <laughs> Kind of like coffee cof latte. <laughs> so this one originates from anterior superior iliac spine and inserts into lateral condyle of tibia and innervated by gluteus superior. So basically, um, okay, we made this like pattern, like so you guys can, so it's easier for you guys to like, know some common insertion or common innovation yeah so within every group we've tried to find like exactly so like things that every muscle has in common yeah and then at the end obviously it's going to be easier for you to to know that for example the superior gluteal nerve innovates these three muscles exactly. then just learning it separately so we're yeah. trying to kind of put everything for you guys together well as much as possible where, yeah. where we can basically so it's easier to memorize basically um so uh like i said earlier a uh, common insertion in greater trochanter for both gluteus medius and minimus and um yeah it uh, so superior gluteal uh, innovates um, all of these muscles except gluteus maximus which is innervated by inferior gluteal in, inferior gluteal nerve and um, they all um, do ab abduction and extension except tensor fascia latte which st stretches iliotibial tract yeah this is mine Okay, so now we're going to talk about the deep group of the gl uh, the gluteal muscles. Um, so like we said, we had please go GQ. So as you can see that the piriformis is the most superior. So out of all of these deep groups, the piriformis is the most superior muscle. And so it originates on the, the sacrum, so its pelvic surface, and it inserts onto the greater trochanter of the femur then you have the the gemulus superior so that's the go part the uh, so gemulus su uh, superior and it originates on the ischial spine and inserts onto the the femoral trochanteric fossa then you have the obturator internus just one second so this is this muscle so like i said we're going in order so then you have the obturator internus which originates on the on the obturator membrane and its um osseous uh, framework so it starts here and then it inserts sorry and then it inserts onto the femoral trochanteric fossa and then you have the gemulus inferior which originates on the so it originates here which is the ischial tuberosity and then it inserts into the femoral trochanteric foramen fossa um, and then the muscle then the last and most inferior muscle of this group is the quadratus femoris where it originates on the ischial tuberosity and attaches onto the intertrochanteric crest on the head of the femur. So, so like we did with the more superficial group, we have now found patterns within this group, within the deep um, group of the gluteal muscles. So, for example, the common origin, <coughs> which is the ischial tuberosity, is, um, is found in the gemulus inferior and quadratus femoris. So both of these muscles originate on the ischial tuberosity. Then the common insertion, which is the femoral trochanteric fossa, is for, so all of these muscles, all three muscles, 
insert onto the femoral trochanteric fossa. And the common innovation for all of the muscle is the sacral plexus. And the common function for all of these deep gluteal muscles is femoral supination. Okay, so there's a little fun fact for you guys. So the piriformis muscle. So it's it's very important for us, especially <laughs> when we're when we're gonna do dissections and things like that. So basically this muscle travels through the greater sciatic foramen and as it travels through the greater sciatic foramen, it divides it into the superior piriform foramen and the infra piriform foramen. And again, why this is important for dissection, you basically, if you can find the piriformis muscle, you'll be able to find where the sciatic nerve, because the sciatic nerve travels through the infra piriform foramen. So like I said, you find the muscle, you find the nerve. Yeah. And this nerve is like easy to identify as, as well because it's like very it's, big. Yeah. And yeah. It's a fat one. Yeah, basically. It's a big one. Okay. So over to thigh muscles. So femoral muscles. So yeah, again, divided into three sections. So anterior, medial and posterior. Um, so anterior we have sartorius quadriceps femoris which is the quadriceps femoris are very very important very we'll important very yeah. important so we will come back to that and uh, medial is gracilis and adductor longus adductor brevis magnus pectus ex externus yeah and the posterior is the semitendinous uh, semimembranous and biceps femoris so now we're going to look further into it. Um, okay, so we've just now gone through the gluteal muscles. Does anyone yeah. have any questions? Should we wait for a bit then? I don't know, should we? Are we we're just going to assume that there's no questions? Yeah, then? okay, perfect. Okay, so we're first going to start with the anterior group of the femoral muscles. Um, so a common thing that we found for all of these anterior group of the femoral muscles is all of these muscles are innervated by the femoral nerve. So just remember this. Um, so you have the sartorius, which is the most superficial uh, muscle of the anterior group of the, the femoral muscles. So it originates on the superior anterior iliac spine, so which is here. And then it inserts into the medial tibial condyle. And its function is flexion of the knee and the, and the hip joint. Um, so another thing that's important to remember is this goose leg. So pes anserinus. Anser pes yes. So this is where there is the joining of the tendons of the these three muscles which is the sartorius the the gracilis and the semitendinous so they all insert onto the medial tibial condyle and this is called pes anserin pes anserinus exactly yeah okay so now we've come to the really important muscle basically so this is the quadriceps femoris and I remember the teacher going to us saying that, okay, so for example, if you don't know maybe one small muscle and then he goes and asks you this and you don't know it, like this is game over. Like, but it's the same also with like the um, sciatic nerve as well, because it's like very thick and, yeah. and you will identify it. And if you can't, then yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this one's a very important muscle. And obviously it's, it's one of the biggest muscles of the, the anterior part. Um, so it's, it's important for us to know. Okay, so it consists of four individual muscles. So you have three um, vas, vastus muscles, which is the which is lateral, medial, and intermedius. Um, and then you have one rectus femoris, which is the fourth head of the quadriceps femoris. So the origin. So again, I tried to find common links between all of this. So all of the vastus start on the femur. Um, so the lateral vastus um, head starts on the lateral lip of the aspheral line. Yeah. 
the medial vas just starts on the medial lip um, of the um, aspera line uh, and the intermedius vas just starts on the body of the femur um, and then the rectus femoris starts on the anterior inferior iliac spine so and then the insertion so what happens with these muscles so as you can see so they all join together and they come together as a strong tendon to the patella and then from the patella so this tendon extends as the patella ligament and then and then inserts into the tibial tuberosity so there you go so all of all four heads join join onto the patella and then as an extension of the patella ligament they join onto the tibial tuberosity so the function of this big muscle is extension of the knee joint and the rectus femoris also participates in the flexion of the hip joint okay okay so medial group of femoral muscle so um yeah okay gracilis so it start so it originates from um symphysis and attaches into a uh, medial condyle of tibia so basically there so w this is what we were talking about the whole um goose leg yeah so this is one of the three muscles that attaches onto the medial condyle of the tibia exactly um and uh, adductor longus so it originates from superior ra ramus of the pubic bone so here and um, inserts into the middle part of the medial line medial lip of aspera line uh, and then we have adductor brevis uh, so this starts from the pubic bone and um, or in attaches onto the proximal part of the medial lip of aspera line so um, yeah longus middle part of medial lip and then we have brevis proximal part of medial lip so longus is a longer one brevis, brevis is, is a, a short, short one. one yeah um and then we have uh, magnus which starts from inferior margin of coccyx bone mm -hmm. And uh, this attaches, so this has two parts. The proximal part um, attaches into the medial lip of aspera line, and the uh, distal part attaches onto the medial epicondyle of femur. Um, then we have the pectineus. Uh, so it starts from uh, pectin of pubic bone and attaches to the pectineal line of femur and uh, we have obturator ext externus which starts from obturator membrane and inserts into the trochanteric fossa um, so basically like all of them have are innervated by the same nerve obturator nerve except for remember when i said that a doctor magnus ha attaches onto two different parts so it has the proximal part and the distal part so the proximal part is innervated by obturator nerve while the distal part uh, in, uh, is supplied by the sciatic nerve um and uh, so all of them do thigh adduction according to the name as well like adductor because it all starts with like adductors um except for external obturator which do like supination of the hip joint yeah so the hint is in the name yeah basically so we made like dissection tips like so this is going to be important for you to know when you have your dissection. Yeah, because your examiner can ask, like, show me the femoral triangle and name the borders of the femoral triangle, which you can see is like superiorly, it will be inguinal ligament, medial adductor longus and lateral sartorius and on the roof 
it's like fascia lata um and the content so basically we there is a mnemonic for this so called navel so basically femoral nerve artery vein and empty space and lim- lymph basically so yes. and remember yeah. this starts from laterally yeah to medially so n to l so this is yeah this this is this will be important for you to recognize and then you should also know that within this femoral triangle you also have the femoral canal which contains deep lymph nodes and the vessels um and so only the femoral artery vein and the canal are covered in this femoral uh, sheath yeah um, and why i'm talking about this because this is clinically important because you have um the potential for a femoral hernia to uh, so a femoral hernia to come th- through the femoral canal so it's basically a tiny little canal yeah so the yeah. femoral hernia will be it's basically the tr- protrusion of uh, the abdominal content via the fem- femoral canal so that's why this triangle is so important because of the possibility yeah. of a femoral hernia that's why we need to know it yeah and also for um like uh, the femoral artery like if you're going to try to find the location to palpate the femoral artery that will be on this triangle yeah so basically when you start doing clinics and you start seeing more patients you'd have to so basically you, you can locate the femoral artery and be able to palpate it to see if um, blood's getting to the lower limbs yeah and you can find it between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic uh tubercle tubercle and if you press in the middle of this you'll be able to feel the femoral artery yes that's something to look forward to yeah okay so after canal um so yeah this is also one of the like important regions yeah in the regional anatomy um, so this one basically connects the femoral triangle to popliteal fossa. Um, and yeah, the borders is adductor longus Wait. medially. Is it fine? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So. I just browsing. Um, so yeah, medially you'll find adductor longus and lateral will be the medial head. Yeah. yeah, medial head of the quadriceps femoris. And ventrally, you will find the va- adductor membrane and dorsally adductor magnus. And this will contain the femoral artery in the vein, so which then will go through this adductor canal into the popliteal fossa and they will become the popliteal vessels. And you mm-hmm. have the cephalous nerve that's found in this so again this is another location for dissection if you're if for example your teacher asked you to identify the femoral artery or the vein you would look for these borders and you look for these muscles and you would be able to find these uh, arteries in the veins yeah basically yeah that was me okay so the posterior so now we're talking about the posterior femoral muscles um so it consists of three muscles so you have the biceps femoris, which is the most lateral of all of these three muscles. Then you have the semitendinous, which is medial to the biceps femoris. So it's, it's located here. And under the semitendinous, you have the semimembranous muscle. So that's just like a general overview. So now we're going to go deeper into this. So we're going to talk about the biceps femoris. So the biceps uh, femoris is basically, like we said, the most lateral of the muscles. And it consists of two heads. So you have the long head and you have the short head. Um, so both of these heads have different origins, but they have the same insertion. So the origin of the long head is the ischial uh, tuberosity. And the, and the origin of the short head is the lateral lip of the aspera line. And they both, so both of these heads, they come together as a common tendon and attach, so sorry, insert onto the head of the fibula. 
So they have different, so like we said, so two different origins, but the same insertion at the head of the fibula. Mm. Okay, so now the two other muscles. So you have the semitendinous. So like we said before, so it's medial to the biceps femoris. Um, it originates the same as the long head of the biceps femoris. So it starts on the ischial tuberosity. So up here, so it starts on the ischial tuberosity and then it inserts onto the medial tibial condyle. So again, so this is one of the three muscles that attach to the medial tibial condyle and this forms the goose leg. Um, and then, so if we were to remove this muscle, so the semitendous, we then underneath it have the semimembranous sem semi muscle and the semimembranous muscle is inferior to the semi <laughs> yeah i just said it um and so this one also originates on the ischial tuberosity and then it, and then it inserts okay so it's inserting tendon is then dividing into two parts so one attaches to the proximal part of the tibia and then the second part attaches onto the oblique pobletal ligament so one of the similarities between the semitendinous and the semimembranous is they have the same origin oh so now <laughs> yeah. okay i feel like i've covered it now so the the patterns now within this group is the the common origins so which is the ischial tuberosity which is like how i've mentioned a couple thousand times now <laughs> is the semi-tendinous and the semi-membranous and the biceps femoris so the long heads they all start on the ischial tuberosity and then the common innovation for all of these posterior thigh muscles is the sciatic nerve and then the common function is extension of the hip joint and the flexion of the knee um so do you guys have any questions so far? Because we covered yeah, because we've covered now the, um, a lot of the, the thigh. thigh muscles basically. So should we wait for a bit? Like, please ask us some questions. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is no questions. Let's just wait. No. Okay. Okay. We can we'll just, just continue then. then. Um, okay. And also another thing that is important is finding popliteal fossa, which is also part of the regional anatomy. And um, so the borders are um, so superior medial will be the semimembranous and semi tendinous. So which is here. This is medially superior and superior lateral will be the biceps here and inferior um, lateral will be the lateral head of gastronomy and inferior medial will be the medial head of gastronomy. So that's basically the borders. And um, so the content you will find Popliteal artery and vein and uh, small saphenous vein, tibial nerve, common fibular nerve, popliteal lymph nodes. So... Yeah, so this is all the content of it. Yeah. And why it's important is, again, if you... For clinics, is you're trying to feel for the popliteal artery. Yeah. And to see if there's so you blood know that, flow to yeah. the inferior... So the lower limbs, basically. If not, you can get some kind of problems like claudication and things like that. Yeah. Basically. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So now over to muscles of the leg. So again, uh, we have the anterior group, lateral and posterior. So on the anterior, we have tibialis anterior um, extensor digitorum longus extensor hallucis longus and um, on the lateral group we have fibularis longus and brevis mm -hmm. uh, on the posterior group we have triceps surrey plantaris popliteus tibialis posterior flexor digitorum longus and flexor hallucis longus 
so now we're going to start with the anterior group of the leg muscles so you have the so you have the tibialis anterior so this is so it's found on the lateral surface of the tibia so it originates on the fibula so lateral side of the tibia I wrote this so fibula side is basically what it says on the white book but obviously to help you orientate yourself it is the lateral side and then it says um on the base of the first first metatarsal bone and the medial cuneiform bone um then you have so the one next to it you have the extenso digitorum longus which is lateral and deeper to the tibialis anterior so it's here so it originates on the lateral condyle of the tibia and the medial surface of the fibula and then okay so this one okay so as we can see in this image so basically what happens is is that so as the muscle goes down from its origin it then splits into five tendons which then travel to the dorsal surface of the foot and and then so and then the four so four tendons end up on the dorsal fascia of the second to fifth um thing well toe not finger yeah <laughs> and the fifth um tendon into the fifth metatarsal tuberosity that was a lot yeah <laughs> so just remember it ends up on the second to fifth toes and then the last muscle of this group you have the extensor halu um, hal halutsis longus so it's deep to both of these upper muscles um so so basically it's here so it's the deepest part so it it can it originates on the medial surface of the fibular shaft um, and then it attaches to the base of the distal phalanx of the big toe so just remember that so the ones are the ones that will end up going all the way extensor halluxis longus so we know that halluxis means big toe so that's why it will go all the way to the big toe and attach and all the other ones will attach to, to all the other toes okay so the anterior group of the legs so the pattern within this group is so all of these three muscles have a common innovation of the deep deep fibular nerve and a common function which is dorsiflexion of the foot and toes so which is basically a fancy way, way of saying extension of the foot and toes like okay right basically like dorsiflexion of the toes so that's done by the extensor digitorum because it attaches to the the other toes yeah while the halus is onto the big toes so that causes um dorsiflexion of that of the toes. Of the big toe. Yeah, the, yeah. the muscles that end up on the toes. Oh, it's mine. Okay, so lateral group of the leg muscles. So here we have two muscles. Um, so you have the fibularis longus, which is the superficial and the larger muscle. The hint is in the name, right? Longus. Um, so it originates on the head of the fibula and the proximal part of um, of the fibula body, and then it goes down. Hold on a second. So so as it moves downwards, its its tendons root is that it descends posterior to the lateral malleolus, and then it goes to the palmar side of the foot, so the sole of the foot, and then when it's on the sole of the foot it would attach onto the medial cuneiform bone and the first metatarsal bone then the other one so you have fibularis brevis which is deeper and it's shorter to the fibularis longus um so it originates on the distal part of the fibula um because obviously if you think about the fact that fibularis longus starts on the proximal part and it's longer that's why, it, and then this one is a short one, it's going to be the distal part of the fibula. And then, so then the tendon 
has the same root as the tendon of the fibularis longus, which will go around the lateral malleolus. And then it attaches onto the tuberosity of the fifth metatarsal bone. So the lateral group muscles. So another pattern for you guys. So the function of both of these lateral leg muscles is plantar flexion and foot pronation. Uh, and the innervation of both these muscles is the superficial fibular nerve. Yeah. So just remember this. Okay, so posterior group of leg muscles. So this this is divided into superficial and deep. So uh, on the superficial group, we have tricep surae, which consists of gustus and soleus mu muscles. So those two creates triceps surae and then we have plantaris so onto the deep one we have popliteus tibialis posterior and flexor digitorum longus and flexor hallucis longus so um this is the superficial group um so triceps surae um it consists of two muscles uh so the like you can see, gastronomicus is superficial and soleus muscle is deep. Uh, and gastronomicus, it consists of two heads. So, um, so basically, the medial head will insert into the... No, starts on the medial condyle of femur, while the lateral... Lateral will originates from the lateral condyle of the femur, and um, soleus that originates from head of fibula, and all of these. So basically, the two heads of gastronomius and soleus they all will insert into the calcaneus tuberosity. So this one. Um, and then we have plantaris, so it originates from lateral epicondyle of femur. Uh, plantaris, so it's this tiny little muscle here, <laughs> this tiny little one, um, and inserts into calcaneal tendon. So lateral epicondyle of femur to calcaneal tendon. Um, and then we have the deep group of posterior um, leg muscles. So popliteus, and uh, it originates from lateral epicondyle of femur um, and inserts onto the dorsal side of the tibia. Uh, tibialis posterior uh, originates from the dorsal side of the interosseous membrane so interosseous membrane is basically between, it's the membrane between the tibia and fibula um, and inserts onto the tuberosity of navicular bone. And um, so basically on the anterior side of the leg muscles, we have extensors, but on the posterior side, we have the flexor, flexors. So flexor digitorum. So it originates from posterior side of tibia and attaches to the four distal phalanges on the palmar side. So the extensor was on the dorsal side. This is on the palmar side. And so the soles of the foot. Yeah. And flexor hallucis longus. So yeah, originates from posterior side of the fibula and inserts onto the distal phalanx of the big toe. Yeah. So, halusis for the toe, digitorum for four for the other, digits. Yeah. yeah, other toes. Um, so, all of these muscles are innervated by the tibial nerve. Um, and they have more or less different function. But like... Okay, these muscles, so triceps surae, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum, flexus hallucis longus, they all do plantar flexion of the foot. Um, and flexion of the knee joint is done by gastronomius, plantaris, and popliteus. And like 
extensors here we have flexion of the big toe by flexor hallucis longus and flexion of the other toes by flexor digitorum. Um, so another dissection tip. Um, so these are the structures that goes around medial malleolus. So we made a mnemonic for this. Okay, we found it online. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's a very good one. We wish we made it ourselves. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, so Tom, Dave, and Nervous Harry. Um, so, basically, yeah, for T for tibialis posterior, D for digitorum, flexor digitorum longus, and A for posterior tibial artery, N for posterior tibial nerve. And H for flexor hallucis longus. Yeah, so it's the H in the halluxus here. Yeah. And the D, D in the digitorum. digitorum. And as you can see, that it goes from like, from the anterior part of the foot, from like at Tom. <laughs> Tom is, think anterior, and then posterior yeah. is H, so Harry. So Tom is at the front, and then Harry's at the end. <laughs> Just being nervous at the end, you know? Yeah. So. so this might be, again, important for you guys to, um, if they're asking for you to, to be able to find any of these muscles. And also, at the same time, we, we use this as well in clinics as well to feel... Yeah, to feel the um, um, tibial artery. Yeah, so um, if you want to feel any of the arteries, you can use this as well. Stereo tibial artery, yeah. So that was it. Do you guys have any questions? Okay, we can wait for a bit. You guys can ask us. Please ask us any. It doesn't even have to be about muscles. It, it can be like anything about the exam dissection, just general. Just generally. Don't be shy. <laughs> Please, we want to talk to someone because we don't have any people around us. <laughs> Lockdown. Okay. Does Grims52 want to ask anything else? Okay. It seems like they... So everything is clear then. So you guys know all of the muscles now of the lower limbs. <laughs> nice. I mean, that's nice. We'll just wait like 10 minutes. 10 seconds. Right? Okay. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And also, if you... So thank you for your attention. At the same time, if you want, there's a link um, that's found on the Facebook event and you can leave some feedback, maybe something nice, please. <laughs> and anything that, yeah, we can improve on, maybe just leave it, if, some feedback on the Facebook event then. Okay, looks like. Okay, thank you guys for paying attention and good luck good with luck. The dissection. Good luck with Masaryk. With Masaryk, with life, everything, lockdown. Um, so, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank Bye. You. Bye. <laughs> Just don't know what that